All right, so here is, um, speaking of so stupid, so stupid, here is uh, the five, Fox is the five, um, and this guy, Greg Gutfield, feels like he's been sort of sidelined during the uh, Trump years because, I don't know, yeah, exactly. There's dumber people there. What do you need right. the guy for? Well, what do you need the guy for? And I think he also just sort of realized, like, eh, I can sit here and just cash checks. I don't need to go out on a limb for this guy. But um, there's nothing that gets a conservative, even ones who are never Trumpers or maybe never Trumpers or secretly never Trumpers or Trump queasy or just not Trump the support. There's nothing that can get a conservative riled more than the idea of people just not letting go of this whole slavery thing and race stuff the problem so why are they doing this is because oh positive race- i should just say he's of course referring to the outrageous outrageous publication of the 1619 um i guess I don't know how to it's a series it's a series. Yeah, yeah. It's a multimedia series. Yeah. Uh, which basically covers the implications of slavery and tracks it through uh, the years, obviously, uh, in terms of the institutions that slavery built and the, uh, the, the politics and the economics, all of which we are, of course, in, in some measure or another living with today because of course we are because it's like, we live with the implications of the railroads that were built 150, 200 years ago. I mean, the idea that you could have such a huge part of your population at that time driving the, the economy of the entire country in many respects and it not have any implications on institutions, on the way the society is assembled, never mind the descendants of both the slaves and the slave owners. Writing about slavery in America. And so there's unfair. so much data on this. I mean, there's just, but still, it's so obnoxious to keep bringing it up. The problem, so why are they doing this? Is because racism is a quantity where in the media, the demand exceeds the supply. So they're going to have to keep creating this. They're going to have to keep doing this. And, and to your point, that's, that slave story, the slave article was probably, I, I didn't read it, but I'm assuming it was probably well, well researched. It was probably well done, but I didn't read it. But now my assumptions are this is all part of a greater narrative to paint Donald Trump as racist. So I'm going to look at everything they do as somehow uh, constru- artificially constructed to demonize somebody and it's not going to stop. It's going to get worse. And we have to admit, this country... Pause over- it for one second. I, I want you to just uh, assess what this guy just said. The, he starts by saying there is a demand to hear about racism that exceeds the amount of racism that exists. And that's why they've got to go all the way back to slavery to find racism, to transport it into the future. In other words... They've got to write about history. It's like doing and, a remake. Right, exactly. Uh, but Racism again, too. this is a complete denial of the implications of this structural racism that, of course, we know like was governmentally promoted well. I mean, federal government, uh, you know, uh, through World War II, post in terms of things like home ownership. But throughout the country by state governments, well into the 60s, that's why you needed a Voting Rights Act. That's why you need a Civil Rights Act. And never mind the implications in terms of society and, and, and what, the, what, what people do privately in private business and whatnot. But so just that, that premise in and of itself, the idea that like there's a demand to read about racism, but there's no racism. And even if there was no racism, what he considers to be racism, 
The idea that it has no implications now is, is, is ridiculous. But then he goes on to say, I haven't read it. I'm sure it's well done, but it makes me feel like it's an attack on Trump, which is basically him saying Trump's a racist. So therefore, anything that has to be written about race, even though I haven't read it, I assume is an attack on Trump. And because I'm paid professionally and probably also feel this way, broadly speaking, which is why I got paid ultimately and found myself in this position to um, to defend this stuff. I've got to now. To paint Donald Trump as racist. So I'm going to look at everything they do as somehow uh, constru- artificially constructed to demonize somebody. And it's not going to stop. It's going to get worse. And we have to admit, this country over time gets less racist. Do you think we're more racist now than we were in the 60s or the 50s or the 1860s? It's getting better, but they don't like that story. Things are going so well that they need to demonize everybody. Pause it. This is the amazing thing that he's so clueless about. The reason why we read this in the paper today is because it's getting better. It is because you could not have this analysis 50 or 60 years ago because we were that racist. Like it, the fact that it's in the paper is indicative of the fact that racism, to the extent that racism can get better, but I understand what he's saying, that our society is less racist. But it's still racist, A, B, Even if it wasn't, why wouldn't we want to read about this? I mean, as society gets less racist, it gives us the opportunity to actually deal and digest with these problems. And there are problems. They were problems at the founding of our country. And do you remember the stat on uh, you can do voting predictions based off of. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is from uh, from Deep Roots. This is from a book that we interviewed uh, uh, on the on the program. You can go back. They have gone da- back and done a county by county analysis, and they can predict. They can predict voting and all sorts of different political implications based upon the ratio of slaves to white people in any given county. They can only predict it in terms of how white people are going to vote. <laughs> they can't do it in terms of black people because black people didn't, didn't have any vote or political will throughout the vast majority of that period of time. And, but the fact that we can have these conversations now that we can have a newspaper is indicative on some level of progress that we've made in terms of race. We have obviously a long, long way to go. Also- but going to go out on a limb and say we might be backsliding a little i i i almost think that like it's wrong even to to look at it as as backsliding as if we're almost on a linear path because i don't think we've ever been on a linear path and i don't think it i i think it's it's just a question of where where it is and how aware we are at any given point and I mean, I know what you're saying, and I think it, maybe it's worse now than it was 10 years ago, maybe. But in some ways, maybe not. I think maybe this is like, it's like when your, you know, your scab heals over and it begins to itch intensely. You know, there are periods of time where things hurt more or less. But I think that the reason why we have a Donald Trump is because on some level, racism, racism had diminished and then it tightens its grip because it feels like it's, you know, people are losing even more because society is becoming in some way, some ways, uh, more egalitarian. Not in all ways. Does he not want us to mark the 400 year anniversary of slaves on this? Oh, oh, you're just Just doing that. It's a giant subtweet. I don't remember anybody doing this at the 300th anniversary. It's not like it's 377 or something and they're really stretching it. I mean, but why did they have to pick that day? Couldn't they have picked a different one to have the anniversary from? Why the 1619? Why couldn't they have just done it from like 
when the first plantation opened. That's very, I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's very a, insulting. Can you to just Trump imagine that though? You like, have to frame right. I mean, but it, you, but you right. imagine, we imagine right. like how hard it is to show up at work and be like, I've got to come up with an angle on this. I'm not going to read it. I haven't read it. I'm going to cop to not reading it. I'm just going to say like, it makes me feel like it's an attack on Donald Trump because they're talking about slavery. It's not a good look. They, that's wow. Sad. Sad. So sad. So, so sad. sad. Stupid. 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 Didn't Thank read you. the article. Thank you. Stupid.